obviously, the work that he's done. And if there's one thing I can say about me, he's the type of guy that the Ohio coaches will be able to contact, go to, and he will always be there to help you. He's always been there for me for anything I've ever asked of him. And uh, I know it'll be the same way. And I know the guys will be tired. And, and uh, you know, just a great guy to know. And he will help you with anything. And I know everything will be good tonight. And in fact, I told him, being I'm a straight guy, you might be here a while with questions. So if you got questions at the end, he said, I'll have anything until 6 a.m. tomorrow. So whatever you guys need. So uh, at this point, uh, the, the new strength uh, and conditioning comes from Ohio State football, Mickey Morale. Appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity to get up here and speak in front of you guys. Uh, I think it's a special time uh, for Ohio State football. It's also a special time for me and my staff and my family. Being back up here in the Midwest, I grew up in Pittsburgh and went to school in West Liberty. I've been around the Midwest, the University of Cincinnati, was a graduate assistant uh, back in 1987 here at Ohio State. Went on to West Virginia, Cincinnati, Notre Dame, and then I kind of went down south there in warm weather uh, for a little bit. And, had the opportunity to come back with Coach Meyer, which is a which is a, which is a great honor and privilege, and can't wait to get going. We've been about three weeks we've been into it. Actually, about four weeks we've been into it. And now, what I'm going to do, rather than give you how many sets of bench press we're doing, or you know how many sets of squats, or we put bands on our bars, and those type of things, I'm going to give you kind of what we gave our team for four weeks ago of how we explain our team, what the program is going to be like. And I think you'll get some, uh, uh, you'll take some things out of here. Uh, like Coach Cox said, our door's always open. I just, if you can wait till we get through this winter program, uh, you know, it's kind of like when you sell a house, you gotta get it ready to sell. Well, I gotta get the room ready for you guys to come in. Uh, but if you're in town, you wanna stop by, say hello, it's always open. Uh, hopefully you guys will come up for spring football and uh, see what we're doing up there and maybe, uh, if you got any questions, I got, a, I got a great staff. I've been doing this 23 years. I've had the opportunity to be a head strength coach since 1990 at the University of Cincinnati. And I can say, without question, this is the best staff, strength staff that I've been involved with. I'm going to introduce them here in a little bit so you guys can see a face with a name. Uh, we have a bunch of our Ohio State football coaches here, as you guys know. And anything you need from us, that's what we're here for. It's very refreshing. To be in stand up in front of a, a high school clinic, a state high school clinic with more than 14 people in. So I commend you guys. I think it's awesome. You guys are working in the school district. I know you probably got a paid vacation day tomorrow. I know after this talk, and you guys get down there to the sports bars and do your deal and, and have fun and, and interact. I think that's what the clinics are all about. Um, like I said, I can make sure to thank you guys for, for listening. Hopefully you can pick up a couple things. But like I said, this is what we we talk to our team about of what our program and the weight room and our strength program is going to be like. Okay? First, I want to introduce my staff as I introduce them so they can stand up. My number one assistant, the associate director for strength conditioning for football, is a guy by the name of Rick Court. Who's Rick? And uh, let's give a little surprise round of applause. Hey, look at my lift. Again, I think with my title with, with Coach Meyer, I've got a little bit more responsibility than I did in Florida and Notre Dame. I've got an assistant AD title. I've kind of, what we do, and I think it's big because uh, there comes time for maybe one of your players to, to come visit the Ohio State University. You kind of got to figure, you got you to understand what our plan and our model is all about. I'm the assistant AD for football sports performance. What does that mean? Is it a fancy title? Yes. But what does, what does it mean? The athletic trainer, the equipment manager, the nutritionist report to me. And that's pretty good. There's not like, you know, a guy is out with an ankle, all that. No, no, no. We want to know exactly what, what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we get, get, what are we doing to get the guy better? What are we doing? Do to get the guy back on the practice field. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity for Coach Meyer to have a go-between for all those uh, three disciplines, four disciplines. We also have academics involved in it. It's a, it's a twice a week meeting that we have uh, and we talk about things and what's coming up for the week, what's coming up for the year, how we can make our student athletes uh, you know, experience better. If a guy has an issue, 
we would know about that issue. If a guy's having a problem in a classroom, he's probably having a problem in the weight room. He's probably having a problem uh, off the field, maybe with a girlfriend or a family member. And I think it's important for those people who touch that athlete the most to understand and try to help that guy. Because they're around the strength and conditioning people more than any other coach. I don't know if you guys knew that. I think you did. But in the summers, when the football camps are over and the cars are put out of the driveway in Dublin and Westerville, where all the coaches live, they go to the Bahamas and Florida and wherever else they're going. The straight coaches are right down there on Woody Hayes Drive, getting after the players, trying to make them better, trying to help this team prepare for the season. But we don't have vacations. So we're around the players a lot. So I think it's very important. Getting back to Rick Court, Rick Court, I needed somebody to have head coaching experience. Rick's been a head coach for three years. Two at the University of Toledo in the state of Ohio, and also at San Diego State. He's been around uh, the state of Ohio, been in a program at Bowling Green for a long time. So I'm fortunate, and we're fortunate, to have someone with his experience and expertise to kind of be the number one guy. Other guys, Kenny Parker, stand up Kenny. Kenny was, give a hand, I'll give a hand. Kenny played with the University of Florida, he was a defensive lineman. When we got there in 2005, Kenny had a back issue. He, had, he, he could no longer play. He wanted to be a coach, he was a student coach for Great Madison. He worked in a weight room for me the next couple of years, went on. He was a defensive uh, line coach, a strength coach, and a director of player development at Murray State the last three years. So he has had coaching experience. And he brings a lot to our table in terms of our program. The other guys, the next guy's Anthony Schlegel. We're Sports Schlegel. Coach Schlegel. Coach Schlegel's playing. Played here. You guys know his story. If uh, you've been in, in Ohio for a while, he uh, went to Air Force, transferred to Ohio State, played the NFL for a bunch of years, been training guys. He brings another element to our program. Uh, he's kind of an intense guy, which is, which is really good. I think that's got to be part of your weight room. <coughs> and then the last guy, but not least, because you is of a better word, Jeff Gulenick. <laughs> You've been around the program, you know Jeff played here at Ohio State, he also played in the NFL for 10 years. I actually coached Jeff when I was a GA here. So we have a relationship, we've, uh, we've kept in contact. He brings another element to our program, having an expertise as an offensive line. And, and, and those type of things. So that's our staff. I'm very fortunate. I'm very excited about it. I know our players are as well. Our coaching staff is, and uh, everybody involved. As we go through this, again, this is what I presented to our team. This is what I presented to our recruits in junior day. So they have an understanding of what we are all about. Okay? You will get what you emphasize. I've been doing clinics, you know, 20 years. I always say you will get what you emphasize at the beginning of the talk. Right? We're talking about off-season program, a bench press routine, a squat routine, speed program. You'll get what you emphasize. If you emphasize standing behind the line, guess what? You're going to get that. If you tolerate them being on the line, that's what you'll get. So as a coach, as you sit there and you're trying to uh, enhance your program, you're trying to enhance your offense and defense, Think back to last year of what things you liked, what things you didn't like. Did you emphasize the things that you didn't like that happened? If you did, if you didn't like that, then you need to change. If there's something that you can emphasize a little bit more, you probably need to do it. These are the things that we emphasize. Work tough as discipline. I come from the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You guys are mostly blue-collar guys, state of Ohio, Pennsylvania. I'm 47 years old. I didn't work in a steel mill, but my parents and my brother and all the people that are around us did. And they know how good it is to work, work hard. These kids that we're dealing with right now are, are the, the millennial generation. You're dealing with them. We're dealing with them. We get what you just dealt with. Sometimes they don't know how to work hard. They really don't know. So it's our job and our obligation to teach them. And that's what we do. Work toughness and discipline. And I think kids crave that. I don't want to hear that crap about, you know, well, you know, all this, all that. Kids love it. When they leave the facility and you were you were hard on somebody about doing something right, doing the hard right thing. You know what they're talking about at the dorms? 
Thought about how much the guy bench pressed on his last set of three, or how many pull-ups he did, or what he did on his hand cleans. They're talking about, man, they made us do this and that. Man, that's what they're talking about. That's what we're trying to emphasize. Maximizing genetic potential. As we get our athletes, everybody has a ceiling. You got it, you guys, you have the same thing in high school. Guys in college have the same thing. There's a seal. We call it genetic potential. It's our job and the player's job to maximize that genetic potential as high as we possibly can get it there. How do you do that? You push their ass to the limits. That's how you do it. That's how we do it. That's our plan here at the Ohio State University. Effort and discipline to work on the hard things. To be on time sometimes is very hard for our athletes. Okay? Again, if we're going to stress discipline, then there, ha there has to be consequence. In a high school situation, a little different. Find something in your program that you can have discipline in. If it's not everything, I don't see why it could be everything. So we put a lot of stress on our athletes to be on, number one, be on time. Be on time. Get them to the weight room, however you can get them there. That's what we do. Winning. You emphasize winning. Hopefully that's what you get. So we try to give, we try to make everything we do competitive. So instead of running through bags or running around cones or getting your time on the three cone, we have to compete against the guy. And there's a winner and there's a loser. Just like when you play on Friday night, there's a winner and there's a loser. It's great to win. When you win, you get Gatorade. You get ice cold Gatorade with little drops of sweat on the side of the can. It tastes like liquid gold. It's the greatest thing ever. When they get done with the workout, they won that workout, they get a shake. It's the greatest thing they've ever tasted in the world, ever. And it's dripping down and licking their lip, they're licking their hands. But when they lose, they drink out of a garden hose. Okay? They get bottled water or tap water instead of a shake. When they get losing, they try to emphasize those things. And like I said before, you are what you tolerate. If you tolerate the guy not finishing through a cone, if you tolerate a player not finishing a block, that's what you get. That's what you get. And I don't buy the fact that all these kids nowadays, they strive and they crave discipline. They crave toughness. That I think they do. My principle, kids, keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. I'm not saying me. This is, this is what I do. Make it easy. Whatever you're doing, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you what you need to do. Your situation is different than mine. Your situation is different than, than coach over here. Coach over here's situation is different than coach back there. Everybody's got different situations. Size of the room. How many athletes play multiple sports? How many athletes are in your school? Do they have to pay to play? All the things that we have to deal with in high school. So, your deal is different than my deal. But regardless of what you do, regardless of what methodology you follow, regardless of what philosophy you follow, it's all going to work if you emphasize it. If there's progression, it's all going to work. I'm not going to stand up here and bash a program or tell you ours is the greatest thing in the world of what we do in the winter. It's not what we do, it's how we do it. So keep it easy. Make it easy. Simple things. Whatever it is. If you're going to squat, then go ahead and squat. But be the best squat teacher you could possibly be. Don't be a program, okay? Don't be a program that's going to test squat. You have a lift a thumb. We're trying to raise money for the program. God, these guys got to squat some big weight, man. We're going to get some money, maybe a new bank. Okay, you're here, here they go. They're underneath the bar. Ah! Ah, boom! The place goes nuts. The guy gets the rep. As a coach, you're like, yeah! In the back of your head, you're like, oh my God, his back's going to explode all over here. Okay? If you're saying that, you're probably right. So guess what? Don't do it. Come up with some other ways to raise money. Okay? So if you're going to squat, do it right. If you're going to do hand cleans and power cleans and snatch it, do it right. If you're going to run with tires in the back of your pulling, do it right. If you're going to shrug, do it right. Whatever you do, do it right. Use common sense. And even at our level, common sense. If it looks bad, it probably is. If they're deadlifting and their back looks like the hump back well, probably not a good exercise for that guy to do. 
I know in the back of your head, you're all going, yeah, that one guy, it's not, it's not worth it. These guys are 16, 17 years old, 15 years old in high school. Those vertebrae and that, that, that bony structure isn't fully developed until like 25, 24. It's not worth it. Not worth it. Make them go hard. So whatever you choose to do, make them go hard. Reward going hard. However you do that. T-shirt for going hard. Just like the five foot seven, 192 pound fullback that wears four net rolls, that is a four four nine nine with wind you know wind dated, wearing like cool spikes, but he'll blow you up in the handgun. He'll give you everything he got. That's the guy that needs the t-shirt. He benches 240. Give him the t-shirt. Don't give the genetic freak who's lazy, who wants everything given to him. Don't give him something just because on a lift of thought he benched 400 pounds. Give a shirt anyways, just don't put four pounds. Okay? Compete. Like I said, we compete in everything we do. Progress. There has to be progress. You have to progress in a weight program, in a speed program, in a conditioning program. Just like when you install your offense, there's progression. You don't start out with the flea flicker. You start out with the trap or the dive, and then the out, and then the post cut. Okay? Whatever it may be. Like I said, if it looks bad, it is. Make it fun. So make it disciplined and tough. Make it fun. However you can make it fun. Kids love music. They love it. So play it. If you don't like loud music, don't play it loud. But you got to know what, motor, what kids are motivated by nowadays. Back when I played college football, it was completely different. Back when you guys played, completely different. Nowadays, it's completely different. So find whatever motivates those guys, whatever it is. Have energy givers around your program. Every one of the coaches that stood up are energy givers. They give energy. I want to be around them. I like being around them. I want to go drink a beer with those guys. Because they bring energy. In the morning, they're all juiced up. Before coffee, before donuts, before bagels, before tea, before Diet Mountain Dew. Those are the guys I want to be around. I don't want to be around dollars, energy takers, the guys that suck energy from you. So if some coach is on your staff that wants to be in the weight room and he sucks the life out of everybody every day, he's negative, go like this, get out, get him out, get somebody else in there, or do it yourself. Because the kids know, they see that. They love energy, players love energy. I like this little slide. My staff, our staff, the football staff, players. You're either in the boat or you're out of the boat. There's no in between. You're either in it or you're out. That boat's moving fast down those rapids. Okay? Like I said before, it's not what you do, but how you do it. There's a hundred different defenses in here. There's a hundred different ways to block punts in here. There's a hundred different ways to run the trap or run the spread or run... Uh, pro style offense. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. So whatever you pick as your method in the weight room, do it as best as you can. And if you're not sure how to do it, 614-292-3536. Someone will help you. We'll help you. That's what we're here for. Because we're going to get one of your players here, whether it's next month, next week, or next month, or next year, or three years from now. So we want to make sure they're ready to roll which I know there were. Ph 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 philosophy of training. Here's ours. Hey, nice little cool deal. 2012, you can do these things. This is, this is ours at the Ohio State University. Incorporating comprehensive strength program based on a precise, periodic, year-round plan of training. Ultimate goal is to train to be the best football player possible. All training phases are based on progressive overload principle. Said nothing about what exercise we do. Said nothing about what days we do. I've done them all. It all works. I've done three days a week, four days a week, five days a week, one, two, three, take a day off four, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, done it Sunday night, done them all. It all works as long as it's progressive, it's precise, you have a plan, and then you follow that plan. That's our deal. That's what we do. Okay? Any questions, stop me as, as we go. Here's our goals, men, as I'm talking to the players. You gotta prove as a football player. Got to improve as a football player. We know that strength and speed and power and quickness 
and acceleration, those things will help us become a better football player. We call them measurables. It's the Nike combine, right? It's the Metro combine. It's the Spark, Under Armour, all those measurables that we're all caught up into right now. Maximize your physical potential and physical mental readiness. And what does that mean? I like guys that are physically or mentally ready to get physically ready. So we have a rule. Come to weight room, there's got to, you got to have some bounce to you. You can't walk in with your hand in your pants and it's not going to work. Get out. Start over. Get out. Get out. Get out. You make them come in with bounce and energy and the whole deal. Increase physical capacity. That's what our program's working on right now. Phys the, the, the capacity to do work over a period of time. That's what we're doing. Obviously, speed, power, like I talked, said a little bit ago, strength, flexibility, help minimize injuries, decrease rehab time, develop confidence and unity. As a player, you guys know, you start in January, you finish in June, or whenever you finish. If those kids have gotten stronger, they've gotten more confident. As, as we train our guys together, there's a little bit of unity that's built up, whether it's in the defensive line, offensive line, the team, whether it's push-ups, sit-ups together. There's just a little bit of unity. And they see each other sweat. They see each other hurt. They see each other pushing through the line. They see that. That means a lot. That means a lot to a football program. The point I'm trying to make about all this, it's not like this is what we do in the weight room and the football coaches do this and Coach Meyer does this. It's all aligned. The football coaches are aligned with the strength coaches. The strength coaches are aligned with the training room. The trainers are aligned with the secretaries. The secretaries are aligned with Adam, Chef Adam, the guy who cooks for our guys. Everything's in alignment. So we're all saying the same thing. So what we're doing is building a program. We're building a program. Developmental toughness and work toughness. Now that, that's who I am, so that's, that's what we're going to be. Okay? Action required. These are the things that we have to do to get that. That was our goal. Here's what we got to do. we got to have an organized, disciplined, precise plan, which we do. Create an intense, competitive environment. I believe our weight room has the best environment in the country. The music's loud, the coaches are loud, the players are loud. It's a great place to get better in. It has energy, energy, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm breeds energy. Energy breeds effort. Effort breeds excellence. The four E's, that's what it is. That's what it is. Develop overall toughness, that has to happen. Demand discipline accountability, sport specific, strength, speed, explosive. Coach extremely hard. We are coaching our guys extremely hard. We all have coaching voices right now. We're coaching them hard. We're being particular of everything they do. They bend down and touch your toes, they do a stretch, it is coached out like you've never heard it before. So when you come to visit, that's the one thing you holy shit, these guys are competing. They're coaching each other. That's unbelievable. That's what, that's what we do. That's who we are. High juice meter. As a coach, as a player, you got, we always talk about having juice. Juice, juice. you got to have juice. There's the same thing I just said. Enthusiasm breathes energy. Energy breathes effort. Effort breathes excellence. Those things happen. What you're trying to get out of your players is the same thing we're trying to get out of our players. Effort. Effort has nothing to do with genetics. Effort has nothing to do with talent. Effort has nothing to do with how much money their parents gave the football club. Zero. Effort that has nothing to do with how many stars they got. Effort has nothing to do with how many touchdowns they scored in high school. It has nothing to do with it. Effort has nothing to do with those things. Weight room and strength, and this, this is kind of more what, what kind of how we're doing things. Focus on ground-based multi-joint movements. So we're going to do things on the ground. We're going to squat, we're going to clean, we're going to do push press. We're going to do everything that we can on the ground. Dumbbell row, we're doing on the ground. Making sure our feet are flat and good base, working that core to hold deal. Make program hard with proper progression. I just feel that, I mean, rather than having hard guys mention 400 pounds and that's what your program's about, I just think it has to be about being hard. So the kids are talking about being hard. It's hard. Remember that stuff you just went through? That's the stuff that's going to transform on the field, too. Don't forget about that. 
use different rest steps and exercise, which we do. Four day program, three day program, mix it up. Right now we're on a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday routine. Mondays and Thursdays are upper body emphasis, Tuesdays and Fridays are lower body emphasis. Mondays and Thursdays, we're doing our running program, which we start phase two on Monday. Agility, speed, and those type of things. Tuesday and Fridays are legs and finishers, metabolic things, and then Wednesdays are mat drills. So we got a Monday through Friday deal on Saturday, which I think is a great idea. We got what's called high knees, the high knees group. The fat, the slow, the weak, the soft, those guys. They come in on Saturday extra if they want. It's voluntary. We're only allowed eight hours. And they come in and get extra. Right? Pretty cool. Begin movement and plot metric program. So that's what we'll do in the weight room. Here's our conditioning and speed, two to three days a week. Focus on mechanics as much as we can. I think <coughs> speed can be taught. Speed is a genetic skill. Skills can be taught. I think it can be taught. Can it be taught to run like the robots run them? Or uh, uh, the, the old guy from uh, Jamaica? No. But can they get a little better? Absolutely. Absolutely. People talk, I tell the crew all the time, football's a game of speed, right? Speed. No. Acceleration. Speed happens over 40 yards, 40, 50 yards. You don't reach, meet, reach max velocity until 50 meters. So in a football game, maybe two guys will reach maximum velocity. The wide out, the ran back to kick, and the guy on the other side that had to chase the guy running back to kick. That's, that, that's basically it. Maybe, a, maybe a, a go route, maybe a corner turn and run it, those type of things. So most of the work that we're going to do is acceleration, 0 to 10, 0 to 5, 0 to 15, different angles, different changes, uh, different stances, different positions, because that's the game of football. That's what, that's what you got to do. If you're looking at a free safety, how many times is he actually going to reach maximum velocity? Cover two, he's, he's deferred. He's got to get back, right? How many yards did he run? 20? Maybe. Okay? This is a good little picture I like to throw up there. A little acceleration and quickness. That's kind of the things that we're going to focus on. When it's time for us to do the things that football has to do, like running 40s and all those things, because you have to do it. 225 minutes, you have to do it because it's a parameter, a parameter that kids are being evaluated on when they go to the NFL. And kids in your year in high school being evaluated in the, in the college scene. So you gotta do it. So you gotta make sure they're good at it because they're being evaluated. Does it have anything to do with football? Look at the NFL study on the combine of all the guys that bench press 225, 40 times. Their, their, their existence in the NFL is like 0.8 years. So, but you have to do it because that's it's part of the evaluation process. I want to tell you a little bit about our nutrition program, what we do, what we've got incorporated right now. Okay? We've got uh, recovery trains, the educator, after lifts, before lifts, before practice, after practice. We have one to two nutritionists present at all times. We have a nutritionist that we just hired and we implanted her in the weight room. Put her in the weight room. So our guys are always, you know, talking about what they can eat, how much fluid they got to drink, all those type of things. And we have a training table and breakfast club. I don't know if you can do it in a high school scene. You might be able to do it somehow. But we make our players Monday through Friday, all the freshmen and the guys that need to gain weight and lose weight, eat breakfast club on campus Monday through Friday. So if they're on campus, they have a meal plan. No big deal. They're there. Swipe their card. They sit down. Nutritionist, strength coach, everybody's helping. They're getting coached up on omelets and, and pancakes and waffles and orange juice and cranberry juice. And then the guys that live off campus, we give them scholarship checks, right? So what do they do? They have to pay. They got to pay at the door. Okay? They don't want to pay at the door, don't be on breakfast club. If you don't want to be on breakfast club, lose weight or gain weight. So it's pretty simple. Uh, we do body composition, body, body skin count. So we're going to make sure we're maintaining the muscle mass that we need to maintain. Uh, and that's our goal. Everybody has a weight goal. I give a weight goal every week, a body weight goal every week. We give a goal for the end of the winter. So uh, Ryan Shazir, freshman linebacker, he'll be a sophomore next year. He was an undersized 210 pounds, probably should have been on the field last year. We have a goal for it by the end of the winter, of the proper way to gain weight, to gain muscle mass, so much per week. Okay, say it's 226. He weighs in at 210 in January. Each week we give a pound and a half 
or two pounds weight that he has to meet. And all of a sudden, six weeks later, he gets on a scale and it says 222. So he's four pounds away. Four more weeks, he gets on a scale, it's 225. Great job. So we give him goals. You go the other way. Guys, have got to lose weight. We've got a 375 pound, 75 pound dude that can do like chin ups for real on our team. That's too big. He's got to lose some weight. So we give him little, little nuggets of weight. Chip two off here, two and a half here, and all of a sudden, over a period of 10 weeks, he's probably lost some weight. Rather than just saying, you've got to lose weight, you've got to get down, you've got to give them some sort of short term goals, and we try to do that as best we can. There's our chef guy, Chef Adam. That's our training table. Really good, players love it. They're doing a great job. There's our breakfast club, big, big uh, waffle in there. Uh, I don't know if you, got, if you guys have been on campus in the Union. It was just open a couple of years ago, I, I believe. They got that restaurant, Sloopy's. We were able to design a menu for just athletes, but all students have it, because it's open to all students. It's a great deal, egg white omelets and those type things. So we're pretty excited about that, because that's a huge part of it. If your kids aren't eating breakfast, you know, you're an uphill battle, uphill battle. I think we based our program on attitude, accountability, relentless effort, and performance. So how do you do that, Coach? Well, we evaluate that every day. When you come in our weight room, you see a huge board that's evaluated by point system, by performance. So we may do push-ups one day, the whole team. And they're competing by position group. So me, playing running back, I did 65 push-ups. Coach Parker did 40 push-ups. Coach Court did 30 push-ups. Coach Yuli did 25 push-ups. Coach Schlegel did four push-ups. I get the most.